This screencast is dealing with the concept of homeostasis. Homeostasis is the, arguably the premier physiological mechanism in the body. Um, maintaining homeostasis, maintaining a basic dynamic equilibrium inside the body in reference to or in response to external conditions is what it means to stay alive and what it means to stay healthy. Um, to be alive is to be able to maintain a normal functioning body. Stressors or homeostatic imbalances um, can be anywhere from mild to severe. And what living things die from is a severe stressor or imbalance in homeostasis. It might be caused by bleeding, it might be caused by illness or disease or a, or a bee sting. Um, you know, there's different levels between a paper cut all the way to a machete cut in the human uh, skin or, or body tissue. So homeostasis is a very important concept to understand. There are three main parts to a homeostatic mechanism. The first being uh, what's called a receptor. The receptor is what responds to the changes. It's part of the nervous system, some sort of receiving part of the nervous system that recognizes and responds to a external stimulus. Now when we say external stimulus or when we talk about a stimulus in the environment, um, it's important to note that it's not just always something that is outside of the body, like somewhere in the atmosphere of the human body. It can also be, um, it can also be a stimulus that is inside the body but just outside of the homeostatic mechanism. For instance, a receptor, you have stretch receptors in the stomach that, line the, that are in the lining of the stomach that tell your brain or they receive the information for how full or how stuffed your stomach is. And then, of course, sends that information to the control center. To keep it really simple, essentially the control center is something in your central nervous system. Essentially, it's the brain. The, the, the brain's obviously very complex, and there's different functioning locations and regions within the brain tissue, but the control center is, is it determines that set point for whatever mechanism we're talking about, whether it's body temperature, whether it's a specific pH of, uh, of the GI tract or the stomach or maybe the intestines, but it sets the, it sets the response. It's kind of the middle, it's kind of the middleman. It receives information and then determines the appropriate response to send on. Quite simply, the effector is what actually carries out the response. So an effector is typically a muscle. As you can see those pictures of my muscles, that picture is not doctored up or edited or photoshopped one bit. Or it's some sort of gland, for example, the adrenal glands. So when the adrenal glands get a message from the control center or from the brain or the central nervous system, they're going to release adrenaline into the bloodstream. That is the effect. So this little quick graphic takes you through the three parts of a homeostatic mechanism that we just talked about, receptor, control center, and effector, but shows you the process through which a, a homeostatic imbalance can be addressed. So from stimulus all the way through this process to the appropriate response, which hopefully, again in this graphic showing you a teeter-totter, will maintain or restore that balance. So probably the most important term to understand in how a body or how a system regulates all sorts of different conditions that it has to, that a body has to, most of those regulatory mechanisms are called or are negative feedback mechanisms. Negative doesn't mean bad, negative doesn't have a, doesn't have, well, a negative connotation. It's, it really means opposite, so it's, it's more of a corrective mechanism. It's like, driving, it's like driving down the road and veering off one direction and actively turning back the other. So it is like, um, it is like actively stepping on the brake. If you're going too fast, you do an opposite reaction. You step on the brake. It's like a household thermostat. The thermostat recognizes that the temperature is too high, the response is to kick on the air conditioner. That will actively bring the temperature down. The opposite of that would be kicking on the furnace. That actively brings the household temperature up. So negative feedback is, 
is 99%. That's not a, a real concrete statistics, a statistic, but most feedback mechanisms are negative in nature. There are indeed only a, only a handful of positive feedback mechanisms in the human body. Probably the two most important are blood clotting and then um, during childbirth where essentially um, contractions put more stress or pressure on the uterine walls which induces more contractions which puts more stress which puts more contractions and and that helps the the uh, movement of the baby through a birth canal. Um, I liken it to again to another driving analogy is that it's like going do going down the highway with cruise control on and deciding that you're going to actively increase the speed rather than decrease it so you would then press the gas pedal 